G'day guys, welcome to the channel. We are planting in mud. Watch the last vlog, which was vlog 79, I think. We just kept getting rain. Um, we just those conditions that just start coming to us, and then we get rain and have to pull up. So over like three days, I'd only done 20 or so hectares. There was a little bit of rain yesterday. Brad actually did a little bit of sowing here, um, but yeah, conditions aren't great, but it's still doing the job, and um, and we're getting on the front foot a bit. So. This is the first run I've done this morning. Um, after Brad sowed that little bit, we did get a little bit more rain. So I am, yeah, just giving it a try, seeing what happens. So we've got Brad over there spraying um, in front of the planter. And then we've got Josiah here stick picking in front of the planter. So with all the works um, here, um, you can see here we've got new banks there, new banks there. This was an old bank here that um, got filled in and um, that was a new one there, I think. Or that might have been just beefed up, that one just there. Um, but yeah, it's looking really good. So this is what we, we Kelly chained and cultivated bits and pieces to get it all looking smooth and it's come up really well. So that is good to see. Um, again, I did say it in the last video, I was gonna get try and get some good drone footage of the whole job, but just the conditions haven't been right to get any good footage. So we'll just see how this video goes. Oh, I'm just coming outside to enjoy a bit of sunshine. Haven't seen it for a little bit and we are right on the limit. Um, it looks like we actually got more rain here than we did up where I was working, which is sort of up, up that hill a little bit there. So it's just been getting wetter and wetter as I've come down. But yeah, with this sun, and it's actually, there's a bit of temperature in it now, so it uh, should, should start drying out pretty good, I think. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a quick look and check that I don't have any blocked um, tubes because what happens with the mud and you know it's not ideal conditions but the mud can come along here build up here and then it can sort of work its way up there and just and block this up here just did a manual override on the seed to let a bit come out you can see it's there and I'll go and check each one um, but yeah you can see here with the with the wet straw and the mud um, the scrapers here are, are doing a hard, hard job. So when you're going along, you can see those scrapers working. They're flicking all the mud off. Same with the scrapers on here. Um, they're flicking it all off. While we do need scrapers on this, I'll, I'll explain that while we're here, is this here is what controls your depth because um, you set up your time here and you've got your different, different settings here to, to, to set it up right how you want it. but as far as this set up here because it's got a parallelogram up there this whole unit moves up and down and what determines how far up and down that moves is this here so you can see you've got the disc in here which cuts the straw but you've got these flat bits either side it's usually rubber not mud but and that's um that's what um this whole unit rides off so that holds the weight of that and and goes through the ground um really good for getting accurate seed depth um, with a normal machine that's just a solid bar uh, if you've got little ups and downs and things like that or you're in a tram line or something uh, obviously you're not at a not at a good depth so that's why they do it yeah it's not nice this mud there's a fully blocked one I think that's that's impressive. Yeah, you don't 
it's not fun. Oh no, I got most of it cleared off. We'll see if that makes it a bit easier to pull. down here done 90 hectares um, that's just in this paddock which uh, I did about eight I think and then Brad must have done um, about 22 hectares yesterday and um, yes yeah, so I've got managed to do 60 hectares today so uh, better than better than nothing it is just quite a bit slower going with all the mud and dealing with that but yeah we're thankful that we can at least get get it in um, yeah, there's a lot of people obviously conditions are still wet uh, I think a lot of it has to do with the soil here uh, because being at the lease block here the soils just a little bit different from uh, some of the other soil we deal with might be a little less clay in it or something and yeah you can just seem to push it a bit harder in the wet but anyway what we're gonna have to do is we've got it says here we've got 30 hectares left of seed. We've got 55 hectares worth of fertilizer. What we might do in the morning is top up with just with seed, and that should give us about, I think, 45 or nearly 50 hectares, which that'll match up with the, yeah, what we've left with the fertilizer anyway, so we won't have to top up with fertilizer in the morning. And then we might get Josiah doing this, and I will hop on the rogator and spray head of the planter so I'll have a couple of loads to do I think anyway that'll be it for the night we'll see what tomorrow brings another beautiful morning the sun is shining thankfully so I've just been helping Josiah get things sorted there with the planter he'll go on with that uh, really hoping that yeah we won't it's not still a bit too damp 
hopefully it's burnt off by now and we should be able to get uh, going full steam ahead. So you can see here, last night, this is sort of where I got up to. We had a few, started getting a few blockages and it's getting a bit messy just as the dew was settling. Um, but anyway, it's a new day. We'll see how much we can get done. I've just got to do two loads of spray, I think. Um, I should be able to finish in this load pretty well everything we need to sow on this property. Um, but yeah, then I've got to go, potentially have to go and spray some of the stuff we already sowed with a, um, yeah, with a residual spray. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's the plan. We'll see whether, whether it changes. one video without breaking something so uh, it's interesting times here I've got this switch here which lifts up my boom on the right hand side and it's gone all floppy so you can see there I can move that like that and that'll, that will actually move the boom up and down but when you go around a corner it'll hit a bump or whatever it drops the boom so uh, I've got to really keep an eye on that um, but I've only got um, yeah, probably 40 hectares left and then Yeah, I'll see if I can fix something. Um, I've tried to get onto a new switch see if we can get one of them soon, but see what happens Well, we're back on the planter so My hands were a bit full trying to um, Yeah, navigate the sprayer so We should have a switch by tomorrow which we can put in I couldn't do much else couldn't film couldn't do much else other than concentrate on that so got that done for the minute though just gonna pop in and give her a top up so we're gonna have to fill her up with uh, seed and fertilizer and then I might be able to get this uh, load out tonight um, so that should put me roughly finishing at maybe 12 o'clock or so for the day and um, yeah and won't be quite as much to do tomorrow then well I got Josiah up there he's holding the auger there so I doesn't wander away. I'm just gonna check over a few things. Um, but I did say in the last video that the seed we were using was in fairly high demand. So I'll explain that while we're here. So this variety of wheat that we're using is called Hellfire. Um, and that's sort of like a replacement for Spitfire. Um, so that won't make a lot of sense to people that aren't in this area. But anyway, why it's in demand is because it's a short um, short season wheat. I think that's what you call it. Um, but basically you can plant it later. So you've got your real long season wheats which you can plant in even March or anywhere like that. Uh, the general sowing times for wheat in this area is um, about the oh, late April, May. Um, and then you've got this variety, which you can plant basically up until halfway through June. Um, and because it's been so wet this season, there's been a lot of people that are struggling to get their long season varieties in. So they're out looking for this variety, which you can plant later. Um, so hoping that it dries out. So that's the story with that. Um, but yeah, what I was saying last video is this was what we grew last year and with the wet harvest, some of it had shot and sprung, which means some of it had sprouted. So we don't, not every seed that we put in the ground is gonna come up, but we'll, um, yeah, that's why we're going on at a bit heavier rate. Well, another sunny morning today, um, which is great. 
Uh, but yes, currently in the Rogator, um, just nursed it through yesterday to try and get those couple of spray loads done, um, as you would have seen. But yeah, thankfully they did have the switches in town. So um, yeah, we've been able to get them today and going to put them in. So basically this here on the joystick, there's just, I think, five screws at the back. I've already pulled them out. And then you can just pull this whole bit out here. And then all you got to do is unplug those. Uh, remember which ones go where. And then I've got to just solder in the new switches. So it's that one there that I need to do. You can see it's not really doing much. It should be like that, but it's just flogging around. So still works, but yeah, just not very happy. So I'll whip her out and um, solder that in. Double check it works, but yeah, it should be fine. So now we've got it out. The tricky part is with these plastic covers that are on them, um, they've got little pins that go through the metal part of the, the switch. So I've got to punch them out in some sort of order to then be able to unscrew it. Um, and then I've got to probably, I'll probably have to unsolder all of these ones here, unscrew that to try and pull it apart enough to yeah get that switch out. But uh, we'll see what happens. We've got this far. Um, what you can do, um, you sometimes you can get, well, you can get uh, what they call solder suckers. And when you heat it up, you can, um, it's like some of them are a little bulb or some sort of spring loaded thing and it sucks the solder out. And um, the other option you can do, it's a little more messy, but you can just use a bit of compressed air. Once you heat it up, just blow it out. You do end up with all these little things here. So if it's a really delicate circuit board, you don't want bits of solder potentially bridging out different things. So um, I'll probably just run over with a bit of a wire brush or whatever to, to tidy up some of those bits, but it does make it easier to, to let the switches out. Um, so yeah, I've had to unsolder that one and all of these three. I do have two of these switches. I actually think they're probably couple of hundred dollars each so I'll keep the one good one as a spare but I'll put two new ones on both the lift ones because there's a good chance the other one might be on the way out too. <laughs> put it all back together and that is working. You can hear a nice click on that and that one, but this one here um, doesn't have that nice click, but it still feels not too bad. The other one over here was, yeah, I'd say not too far before it was, it was no good either. So uh, I'm gonna probably mix up a couple loads of spray, um, finish spraying behind the planter. We should be finished up at the lease block um, tonight. So I don't think, there'll be much more to this video unless something exciting happens but that'll be it for now we'll catch you in the next one